Hi, welcome to this tutorial on implicit differentiation. Now what I'm going to show you is how we find dy by dx from an equation like this. It's called an implicit function because you'll notice we've got x's and y terms on the left hand side of the equals and we've got x and y terms on the right hand side of the equals. And what I'm often asked is why can't we just rearrange this to make y the subject if we're going to find dy dx to make y the subject and express it in terms of x well if you were to try and make y the subject for something like this it's going to be very awkward if not impossible at times so we've got to come up with a way of finding dy by dx and that's the method I'm going to show you so what we need to do is introduce the reader to what we're doing and that I would always encourage you is to write differentiate with respect to x. Okay, So just write that title there or diff for short WRT x. Now if we differentiate with respect to x the first term here you should know it's going to be 3x squared. But what I'm going to do is just take a little time out and I want you to just bear with me on this one. Differentiate with respect to x. I'm going to write this in for every term, x cubed. I'm going to write it in for the next one. We're going to differentiate with respect to x, 5y to the 4 and so on. So we'll just write this in. As I say, you'll see why in a moment, why it's so important to do this. And as we get to the end of the tutorial, I'll show you a much quicker way. But anyway, I've got every term now written as being differentiated with respect to x. Now, we know what the differential of x cubed is with respect to x. It's 3x squared. But I'm not going to write that in yet. I'm just going to write that back as x cubed. But it's this term that I'm more interested in. Differentiating 5y to the 4 with respect to x. We can't do it. We can only differentiate it with respect to y. If we were to differentiate it with respect to y, it would be 20y to the power 3. So how do we get around this problem? Well, what we do is we differentiate the function with respect to y, not with respect to x. I'll just mark this in here that we differentiate it with respect to y. And I'll put the 5y to the 4 back in. But the problem with this is that this is not the same as this. We've got an extra dy in. So what we can do is as if we want going to take it out. It's as, as, as if these cancel. And then I put back the dx. Alright. So I will be able to differentiate 5y to the 4 now with respect to y. It's going to be 20y cubed. Let's go on to this term. This is fine. 7x squared to be differentiated with respect to x. That's not going to be a problem. When we get down to there, that's going to be 14x. But I'll just write it in like that for the moment. Then we come on to this term, differentiating a y term with respect to x. So again, we can get round this problem. We can differentiate 3y with respect to y. As long as I've now introduced this y, dy, I take it back out again. And then we put over dx. So this is going to be the same as this one. When it comes to the last term, differentiating 6 with respect to x, that's going to be straightforward. It's going to be 0. But again, I'll just write d by dx of 6. OK. Well, this is the mechanics, if you like, of what's going on. And now we're just going to differentiate with respect to x. So, what do we have? Well, with the first term, 
is going to be 3x squared. And differentiating 5y to the 4 with respect to y is going to be 20y cubed. So we're going to have minus 20y cubed. But we must write dy by dx at the end. Then we come to the next term. Differentiate 7x squared with respect to x. That's going to be 14x. No problem there. Differentiating 3y, we can differentiate it with respect to y and get simply 3. But we must remember to tag on dy by dx. Then we come to the last term, differential of 6 with respect to x. Well, that's just going to be 0, so we can leave that out. Now, what I would suggest is that you don't do this all the time. It's going to be far too tedious. You should just be given the equation and just write down differentiate with respect to x and you should be able to go straight to this kind of line. But it is important that you understand the theory so that's why I've included these two lines here. Okay so assuming then that you're given something like this differentiate with respect to x brings you straight down to here. What do we do next? So if we're to make dy dx the subject, we've got two terms here that contain dy dx. So we've got to bring them to the same side. And that side would be best on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 14x from both sides and add 20y cubed dy dx to both sides. So if we do that, what we've got is 3x squared and then minus the 14x equals and then if I add this to the other side we're going to have 20y cubed dy dx and then minus the 3 dy dx. I chose that rearrangement so that the first term on each side could be positive. Now what we do is, well, well, we could write this down like we see it, or we could see that x is a common factor here, and it's always a good idea to bring any common factors out. So we'll bring x out the front, and we have 3x minus 14. And then on the right-hand side here, you can see that dy dx becomes a common factor. Now, we don't write dy by dx at the front of a bracket, we always write it at the rear. Okay, so write this as 20y cubed minus 3 and put dy by dx at the end. That's the general position that you should put it in. It wouldn't be wrong if you did write it at the front, but I would certainly encourage you to write it at the rear. Okay, it's a simple step now just to make dy by dx the subject because all you need to do is divide both sides by 20y cubed minus 3. So I'm going to put dy by dx back on the left hand side here and then what we're going to have is x bracket 3x minus 14 all divided by 20y cubed minus 3. Okay, so what we've got then is dy by dx expressed in terms of x's and also y's. Now that we've found dy by dx, we can use it in various applications like finding equations of tangents and normals to this curve. Or we could find stationary points where the gradient is zero. And in later tutorials, what I'll do is I'll show you how to do that. But for the moment, all I want to get across is how we can find out dy by dx from an implicit equation. Okay, so I hope you've been able to follow that. Well, that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.